and call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he is the, the greatest among you shall be your servant. And whoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and you Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you have made him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Isaiah said, those who try and hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. They carry out their schemes in secret and think no one will see them or know what they are doing. They turn everything upside down. You're looking at the Vatican in St. Peter's Square. St. Peter's Square is in the shape of a keyhole. The Vatican itself is in the shape of an upside down cross. This is truly the devil's church that has misappropriated and hidden the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Even the name St. Peter's Basilica gives away the identity of Satan's church. Basilica, the origination of the word, means a place of a king. The word basilisk refers to a serpent described as a dragon that can kill by its breath or look. Basilica translates into the abode of the basilisk, which is the abode of the serpent, the royal serpent, the serpent that wears a crown. Revelation 12. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. As you view the entirety of the Vatican itself, the upside-down cross, at the head of the cross 
the head of the serpent becomes visible. The conspicuously placed circles for the eyes of the serpent, as well as the square window for the exit of the tongue on the mouth of the serpent becomes obvious. It is truly the abode of the serpent. The dome on the top of the Vatican becomes the crown of the serpent, truly hidden in plain sight. The entirety of the Vatican is an upside down cross with a serpent at the head of the cross wearing a crown. This is truly the church of Satan and the keys to the kingdom of heaven have been hidden by Satan himself in the form of one of the largest Christian churches in the entire world, boasting of over 1.2 billion members deceived by Satan himself. Woe unto you Pharisees and teachers of the law, for you have taken away the key to knowledge. You don't go in yourselves, and you've kept those who are trying to enter from entering. Your damnation shall be the worse. Not only in the Catholic Church, but all forms of apostate Christianity have hidden the key to the kingdom of heaven. An old serpent called the devil and Satan, the accuser of the brethren, took on the form of what's called a nakash in Genesis 3. This is his first encounter with humanity, and this is when he deceives Adam and Eve. The Hebrew word is the Strong's Concordance uh, 5175, nakash in Genesis 3.1. And it's not just a creepy crawly snake, it is a shining serpent, it's an upright fallen angel. It's Satan in this form that he was beautiful to look upon and he tempted Eve. It was more than Eve eating a piece of fruit, but the point of this Nakash reference is that he, the serpent, manifests all over the world in all these various cultures in disparate time periods, the Mayans, the Aztecs, the Egyptians, the Sumerians, Phoenicians, in Asia, and Japan, and China, and there's this obsession with this dragon, this winged serpent, and this isn't just the rudimentary imaginations of man coming up with some mythological creature, This is these are carvings of what they saw and it's pretty evident to see that. It's hard to explain this as just coincidence that all these cultures came up with this same creature without there being some type of common denominator being Satan. Just like it says in Revelation we just listened to that he deceives the whole the whole world. He's deceived the whole world and Michael's gonna cast him out. Michael is gonna fight with the angels and and they're gonna fight Satan and his fallen angels which is one-third of the angels and they're gonna get cast down to the earth and Satan's going to then set up his New World Order government. But he has to have the groundwork here. He has to have a throne built for him so that when he gets here, because he knows he has a short time, he's going to have to sprint right out of the gate. And so we're trying to expose to you that his groundwork has been laid, the channels of communication and the channels of worship and these avenues and funnels of blind loyalty, fealty, devotion, trust. The world right now is facing something deeper than human corruption or greed or malice or lust for power. Uh, it, it's a lot darker than that. And there are plenty of humans and things that look human on this earth that have chosen their king and they've chosen Lucifer they think that he's got a chance to win they backed him at the original uh, fall of the angels they thought he could you know set his throne above the most high and they are gonna fight to the death they're dug in and there are humans that have accepted their role and they think that they're gonna be rewarded um, if anyone saw Transformers 3 you'll see this, uh, this concept. I remember a talk I had with my dad once about tough choices. And now's not the time, we'll set something up though. Of course, that was way back when my dad's firm was in charge of budget review and accounting for NASA. You see, the thing that he taught me was when it's not your war, you join the side that's going to win. I really think you're the first man ever asked to join the noble alien cause. Who are you? 
And you know why we've not been back to the moon since 1972? Because these two, they came to my dad and they told him to do some creative accounting. They get way too expensive to ever go back. So he and others shut down the American and Russian space programs and they've been our clients ever since. You up for kill people? You think they'd give you a choice? Besides, it's not like I personally participate. I am a liaison. I liaise. It's also takeover time, Sam. Be gone and set up for you. Your work is done. Your Excellency. You chose sides? You chose wrong. That, that's it. They think that he's going to get to rule forever, but it's going to be for 1260 days, uh, what's known as the Great Tribulation in the Bible. This is all prophesied in the Bible. So if you're not a believer and you see that there is this nefarious, unhuman-like evil that is manipulating world events. <laughs> creating false flag terror events uh, starting with these doctrines of man and these religions that all are going to be prepared and they're all going to culminate whenever he does arrive he's going to appear benevolent but he is going to be that old serpent Satan and just like when he tempted Jesus in the desert in Luke he was he took him to all the kingdoms of the earth and he said look these all belong to me for the glory of them has been bestowed to me from god god has allowed satan to set up these governments and kingdoms and royal bloodlines and it's all part of the plan he's going to let satan flex all of his muscles and he's still going to win so we're here not to pick on any one particular religion but to show you that they are all tracing back to you that old serpent Satan the devil the deceiver he has created all of these false religions these man-made satanically inspired man-made religions as evidenced here John of Potmos who saw the visions um, that Jesus gave him and he wrote the book of Revelation in 70 AD when he was shown the mark of the beast and the number it was in a foreign language to him at the time and he just wrote down what he saw and what he wrote was the Greek number 666 here as he wrote it and as you can see it is a <laughs> it is an eerie match for the phrase in the name of Allah and there is even uh, it even looks like a serpent to me I mean here it is and, and the Arabic language was not officially recorded as being a written down language until 512 AD so John saw this and wrote it in 70 AD and then 500 years later we have the phrase in the name of Allah and there was war in heaven Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found any more in heaven and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. The enemy has laid a snare for us, and they crucify us upside down. Here we go. We're going to try and do a very, very short, concise series like you're in a classroom. You're about to see the Unrolled Scroll of Prophecy. I know a lot of people are going, that's pretty bold talk. I'm going to allow the Lord to use the spiritual gifting He's given me. We're going to show you things you would never, ever be able to see without knowing the, 
the supernatural quality of the Bible and spiritual gifting, the gift of knowledge. The Bible says, my people die from lack of knowledge. And it says, because you have rejected knowledge, I have rejected thee, says the Lord. Okay, I'm going to start with Isaiah 29, 15, because my walk with the Lord started in a hotel room in 2002. The first thing he told me was, 100%, and then he told me to turn this tag upside down, and it said, no line. It was the word nylon backwards and upside down. And the Lord told me, 100%, turn it upside down, no line. So, using the scriptures and using spiritual gifting, this is the key to the kingdom of heaven. It's the key to knowledge. It's the key to understanding the scriptures. It is the unruled scroll of prophecy. And you can do what you want with it. I don't care if you believe me. I have to do what I have to do. Um, here we go. Isaiah said, Those who try and hide their plans from the Lord are doomed. They carry out their schemes in secret and think no one will see them or know what they are doing. They turn everything upside down. So I'm going to apply that to this right now. I turned it upside down. Now you have a dead sheep. There's the eye of the sheep, the other eye. There's a nostril, and there's the tongue of the sheep. So now, what was an image of the Virgin, when it's turned upside down, becomes an image of a dead sheep. We're going to look into this further because this is way more than a dead sheep. This is down to a cellular level. We're going to look at it in part three or part four of this explanation. So their plans are to kill sheep. Who are they? Well, this is the Roman Catholic Church. I was born and raised Catholic. I got saved in 2002. I was called away from her as a witness against her. Here's the scripture. Come away from her, my people, for her sins are piled as high as heaven, and the time of her judgment has come. Okay, we're going to move on. I'm going to go to 2 Timothy. And as a servant of the Lord must not quarrel but be gentle to all and teach patiently and humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance, so repentance is a gift granted to you by God, so that they will know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. So the devil has put everyone in a snare. You are in a snare. That's what the Bible says. Everyone, the whole world, every human being has been put in a snare. There we go. A snare is an especially deceptive trap that turns the victim upside down. Uh, that's what a snare is. It's a trap. Well, now I'm going to show you what a snare is on a molecular level. This is snares, S-N-A-R-E, at little s, and the V-ATP is adrenaline triphosphate. ATP poised at the final steps of synaptic fusion. ATP is produced in what's called your mitochondria. This is going to be significant in part three or four, but you must hear it now. Your mitochondria produces the breath, the breath of every cell. So energy equals breath. Spirit, the word for spirit, the definition of spirit is breath. In Genesis, God breathed into Adam and he became the spirit of life and he became a living soul. So breath equals spirit. Okay? So we're going to get to that in part three or part four, but you need to hear it now. Psalm 146.9 says, The Lord loveth the righteous, but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. Okay, now we've covered the upside down. Now we're going to go straight into the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What claims to be the church of Jesus Christ, which claims to be the original church of Jesus, the Catholic church,
claims to be the church of Jesus Christ. The one that Jesus was talking about. I will quote the scriptures. Jesus said to his disciples, who do people say that I am? And his disciples said, some say you are Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist reincarnated. Some say you're one of the prophets. And Jesus said, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, I say you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, blessed are you Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. It was a revelation from God. He said, but my father who is in heaven, and I will call you Petra, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will found what is to be called my church. And I will get in the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And Peter, I will give to you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So Peter has been given the keys to the kingdom of heaven because he recognized who the Messiah was. How was Peter crucified? Peter was crucified upside down. So I've been continuing and saying that is the key. Those are the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Once again, if this is an image of the virgin and I apply the key to the kingdom of heaven to this, I'm going to turn it upside down. And what is it? I just applied the key to the kingdom of heaven to an image of the virgin, but the virgin becomes a dead sheep. I will contend to you right now, the image of the virgin is also more than an image of the virgin. We'll show you this in part two. It is the mitochondria of every cell. It is where the breath is produced in every single cell. The mitochondria produces the breath of every cell in your body. And it has been repolarized. And we're going to show you what's happened to you and what's happened to us. So, now the key to the kingdom of heaven has been given to Peter. Jesus said, you will be the rock that I found my church on. Because Peter recognized who the Messiah was. And it wasn't told to him by man. It was a gift given by God. The recognition of the Messiah. Okay, Peter was crucified upside down. The Roman Catholic Church has hidden the keys from you and from everybody in the whole world because they know the key to the kingdom of heaven. But they misappropriate it and they're doing this. They're getting people to worship the virgin and when you're worshiping the virgin, it's a dead sheep. And we're gonna go over this in the next section and show you what it is. Now, we're gonna put the imagery in here. I'm gonna show you that the, that the Vatican itself, the entire Vatican is an upside down cross. St. Peter's Basilica is in the shape of a keyhole. At the bottom of the keyhole is an upside down cross, which is the Vatican itself. As you rotate the image of the cross and you come in at a 45 degree angle, the entire head of the cross becomes a serpent, even with its tongue out. St. Peter's Basilica is made up out of black cobblestones. Those black cobblestones are identical to the scales of a serpent. The word basilica means abode of the serpent, of the basilisk. So basilica means abode of the basilisk. It also means royal abode of the basilisk. The word basilisk means serpent that kills with its breath. We'll show you all those definitions and we'll continue on the next part. Israel is Jacob and Edom is Esau. It says God loved Jacob. And on one side you have what God loves, the other side what God hates. Um, here we go. There are two different subsets within one set. We represent, our temple represents the whole set that has two different subsets. So we are a kingdom that is divided. Jesus said any kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. You have been made your worst enemy. 
I'm going to use this as a representation as, as a human being. It's also the same as the land of Israel and the land of Edom. The land of Israel came about because God, Jacob wrestled with God and he said, I will call you Israel, after Jacob confessed who he was. The same as the guy on one side of the of Jesus being crucified, he also confessed who he was. And he ended up getting saved. God blessed him and said, okay, I, now you can go. Now you've repented. Now you can accept Christ. Now, I'm going to show you that same paradigm exists in the entire earth. Everything revolves around right side up and upside down, a half and half paradigm. It's us. I'm going to move this now. Over here is the land of Israel. This is the Jordan River that runs between it. This is the land of Edom, or Jordan. Edom is Jordan. Okay, I'm going to show you what... Israel is Jacob, and it just switch sides, so we'll have Israel over here. Israel is Jacob, and Edom is Esau. It says God loved Jacob, but he hated Esau. You see the cross in between? I'm going to go back. This is the Jordan River between the two different lands, which represent a whole. It's the same as the cross of Christ. Okay, on one side you have what God loves, the other side what God hates. The Jordan River runs between them in the Great Rift Valley, so there's a great divide between the two lands. The word Jordan means red and it means cleansing, just like the blood of Jesus Christ. Born again. So between the two different lands, the Jew and the Gentile, the red cleansing runs between the two. That is exactly what the cross of Jesus Christ represents. Reconciling both to God in one body through the cross. I'm going to show you now. On one side, you have Israel, which is Jacob. On the other side, you have Edom, which is Esau, which God hated. The Jordan River, which is the red cleansing, runs between the two. There it is, runs between the two lands. Now, you have the left and the right. You have the red cleansing in the middle. On one side you have the Gentiles, God hates. They're upside down, darkness and Satan. The other side, you have the Jews, God's chosen people, God loves. Right side up, light and God. When I hit this button, it flipped it. Peter was a mirror image of the reflection of Jesus Christ. And this is what the reconciliation looks like. You are magnetized, your energy in your body, if you have a magnet that is polarized, pushing against another magnet that has an opposing force, there is a great chasm between the two. They cannot come together ever because there's a great chasm there is a polarization between the two. But if you flip one upside down, they will come together and they will be made whole. That's how you recognize who Jesus is. He's the one that turned you upside down. That's who the Jesus is I recognized. And when I got saved, my whole entire testimony on tribulation now and before that says, I just wanted to know who the real Jesus was because so many different denominations say they have the real Jesus and they're all different Jesuses. The real Jesus is the one that Peter recognized. The only way Peter recognized him is God gave him the gift of repentance and he looked at Jesus and God told him who he was. And God, Jesus told Peter, I will give to you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. It's the last chapter of the Gospel of John. You have two different halves. You have Israel and Edom which is Jacob and Esau. You have the red cleansing, which runs in between the two lands, 
which is indicative of Jesus on the cross. And this is what it looks like. Two different lands that have the great rift valley in between, just like there's a great rift between us and God. Between the devil and God, there's a great, great chasm. And the only way to fix it is to turn one upside down and change the energy. Here's the scripture. First, I'm, I'm going to give you a law of energy. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but it can be converted in its form. Jesus said, unless you are converted, you will all likewise perish. Unless you're born again, you will never see the kingdom of heaven. Now we'll move on to the mitochondria. do guys is I'm going to start I'm going to expose the paradigm the entire Bible is based on a certain paradigm and I'm going to show you the simplicity of Christ and the simplicity of understanding uh, this this unrolled scroll of prophecy it's absolutely amazing once you see how simple this is I'm going to start with uh, Matthew 3 and talking about John preaching repentance I'm going to start with the land of Israel. So on one side you have what God hated, and on one side you have what God loved. Okay? So, you, and you got the, the red cleansing going in between the two lands. We're going to put both these lands in one set. Well, in this river runs between the two lands, and it's in what's called the Great Rift Valley. So there's a great, great rift. The Jordan River represents the same thing as the cross of Christ, reaches out and bridges the gap between the two different sets. Now I'm also going to do this, and I'm going to show you. When John came and preached repentance, and the kingdom of heaven was at hand, he came and he preached and he said, come out and be baptized in the Jordan, which meant red cleansing. This is exactly a representation of what the cross of Jesus Christ looks like. This is what Ephesians 2 is. Ephesians 2 states, Jesus Christ, He Himself is our peace. Reconciling both to God is the red cleansing by the blood of Jesus Christ. Even the names of the places are exactly in line with what the Bible says. And then we're going to take this down to a cellular level and then I'm going to show you how the whole world's been turned upside down. Jesus Christ is the mediator. He mediates the divide between them with His blood. I put a drop of blood here to show you something. This entire way down, this is the Jordan River, and all this area would represent the land of Israel and Edom going down. As the water travels down, this is like your life. You only have a certain amount of time to get saved before this journey is over and it empties into the Dead Sea. Okay, the Dead Sea has no outlet. The entire Dead Sea is just a, it's like a cul-de-sac. And there's nowhere to go. It ends in the Dead Sea. So, if this represents your life, the distance, the distance from here to here, this represents your life and the timeline of your life from the beginning to the end. If you don't get this great rift mediated by the cross of Christ before the end of the ride, it ends up in the Dead Sea. There's no way for you to solve this unless Jesus Christ becomes the bridge this would be an awesome place for an image of the bridge, you know, where the cross goes between the two valleys. I'm going to submit to you Psalm 146.9. The Lord loveth the righteous, but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go like this. The point is, I'm making one right side up and one upside down. The polarity is different. If you take two magnets and you push them together, when one is upside down and one is right side up, 
They will never come together. They will push against each other and there is a great chasm between them. The only way to join these two together is to take one of these and flip it upside down and then you change the polarity and this becomes like this. So it becomes the same here and here and then they come together and it is a representation of Christ bringing the two together. And just for the record, so you understand, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this very clear. It has nothing to do the, the sameness. What they do is they they turn a cross upside down, and they um they worship Satan. But I want to show you something. You have polar opposites. You have the cross of Christ. Okay. Well, how was Peter crucified? Peter was crucified upside down there it is it's a mirror reflection if you look at the Washington Monument if you look at the reflecting pools at the One World Freedom Tower you look at the Alfred P. Moore building there's always a reflecting pool so you can see the image right side up and upside down because the enemy knows and they hide it those who try and hide their plans turn everything upside down once you are turned upside down once you see this other world and you know that there's another world in front of your, your face, you'll see that it is the key because there's a whole other race of beings inside of you and they turn everything upside down. Guys, here's the deal. What's really fascinating and what needs to be part of the story is how this was revealed because the way it was revealed is even significant. So we're just gonna run you by real quick the location of where the Lord revealed this information, and we're gonna show you the, the circumstances surrounding it. So when we get there, we'll pick up. It's very significant the way this was discovered. So we're gonna pick this up going down this like little space. It's a very narrow gate. Narrow, narrow gate. What does that remind you of? Narrow is the gate, right? Hard is the way. Um, but anyway, so here we go. We're gonna go through this very narrow pass, and then we're gonna have to basically make a U-turn uh, compared to the way that I normally would park here. So look how narrow this little area is. Okay. Look at that, we can barely make it through. Okay, now here's the thing. These cars that are parked here, usually I can just pull in and park right to the right. But these were all taken, so I had to pull all the way up here, and I had to make a U-turn and face back the other direction. So I had to go back and turn my car all the way around, and then boom, look what's out my window right here. The mitochondria. Isn't that cool? Well, we're going to show you what it represents. This is awesome. Cool. Yeah, that takes it. Okay, you got it? Okay, guys, so here's a representation of the mitochondria. You see? You'll see one on the wall behind me in just a minute. I'm going to go stand by it. But, you know, here it is. And here's this little thing that's one way. This one's like this. And we got one that's coming the other way upside down so you see guys as clay zooms out I've got the same mitochondria thing going here okay you ready for the big surprise you see right here okay this is important you see how the lines have come closer together right here because that's the polarization that's where the energy goes all the energy goes to this point and it becomes polarized where the lines get closer just like the North Pole or the South Pole well let's let's see what that polarization is I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to show you what's causing that polarization. The polarization is the tongue of the sheep. There's the tongue of the sheep. There's the energy coming off the tongue. Here's the sheep. There's the eye, the eye coming down the face, the nostril, the nostril, the lips and the tongue. See that? There's the energy coming out of the, the tongue of the dead sheep. Well, that energy is crowning the virgin which is the mitochondria that's the powerhouse of every cell 
you're looking at the powerhouse and the energy production of every cell in the human body. So the mitochondria produces all the energy for every cell in every human being on the planet. So it's been appropriated. It's been stolen by this. Genesis 6.4, Daniel 2.43, and we'll go on and on and on and on. Get ready. Okay, here we go. We're talking about cellular, you know, level stuff. We're talking about the mitochondria, which is inside every cell of your body. You are looking at an image of a mitochondria. These lines coming off represent the energy. These lines represent the energy coming off the mitochondria. This produces the breath of every cell. The breath, the breath of every cell is produced in the mitochondria. It's called cellular respiration. 36 ATPs are produced in the Krebs cycle. Here comes, this is the energy, this is a representation of the energy off the mitochondria. As we get to the top, the pole of the mitochondria, you will see that the energy lines have become polarized. They get, they're coming up like this and then the closer they get, the tighter they get. Okay, so right here, all these lines of energy have become polarized. So, the energy from this mitochondria, which produces the breath, has gotten polarized at this end of the mitochondria. Let me show you what you're looking at. An image of the virgin, and by the way, this right here is a horn, because it's the devil. So, the virgin is wearing a crown. All these lines represent the crown of the virgin, and it's the polarization of the mitochondria. You see all these little black lines? They all represent the criste in the mitochondria. The surface that produces the energy in the mitochondria is the criste. It's funny, it sounds like Christ, doesn't it? The energy that's coming off the tongue of the dead sheep Here's the tongue of the sheep right here. Here's the energy, the life energy, the breath. The breath comes out of the mouth and this sheep has died so all its breath has been given away or taken. The breath has been taken to crown the virgin which is the other race of beings. When the sons of God had intercourse with human virgins, human We're women. We're going to show you that right here in this image of the virgin, this is the face of the devil. You have the devil this way, holding a pitchfork. There's the eye of the devil, there's the nose. Here's the mouth, here's the chin right here, here's the horn right here, here's the other horn right here. He's got, he's got like a hood on and he's wearing this long robe that's dragging on the floor right here. This line splits the mitochondria in half right here, straight up the middle. That line is a pitchfork. If you look down here at the very bottom, there is an upside down crucifixion. Here's the head. Here's the head. And the hair hanging down. Here's the shoulder going out to the arm. Other arm going out. Here's the chest right here. Line down the stomach. Stomach. Here's the waist. Here's his buttocks. Here's his knees bent. One shadow. One is facing you with the color. His feet down here. Here's the block his feet are on. Here's the cross behind him. Here's the cross. And going out this way and his arm going out to the cross. So here's an image of a crucifixion. He's crucified. He's upside down in comparison to the devil. You are looking at the mystery of human existence. You're looking at the unrolled scroll of prophecy. Get ready and prepare the way of the Lord. Jesus is coming. Here it is, folks.
We're going to go back to my personal testimony where I got saved in an alley in the presence of Michael the Archangel. I do not care what anyone thinks about it because now the record will speak for itself. Now that everything's been delivered, it all will make complete sense, everything I said in that alley. After I was saved, Michael first told me, pray with me, my brother. Then we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Father who art in heaven. We prayed the Our Father. Water and light came down on me. I was instantaneously filled with life and light. I was born again. I was a new creation. When I got saved, I was full of light. Light was coming out of my body. I could feel it. Energy was going through me. It was nothing I had ever experienced. And then immediately, Michael looked at me and he said, now you pray a Hail Mary. I looked at him confused, like, why? I knew it was wrong now. Inherently, I knew it was wrong. And I looked at him, like, why? And he nodded his head and said, you pray a Hail Mary. He even stepped away from me. He got some distance away from me. And then as I started praying the prayer, life and light and energy started leaving my body. Can you see that the energy that's coming off the tongue of the dead sheep, here's the energy, the life energy, the breath, the breath comes out of the mouth, and this sheep has died, so all its breath has been given away or taken, the breath has been taken. When he told me to pray the Hail Mary, I knew it was wrong inherently. And as I prayed the prayer, life and light and energy, breath left my body. Now you know why he told me to pray the Hail Mary. To show me where death came from. There's a really good picture Clay has in here of the Virgin. Clay will put in an image of the Virgin right now that shows you death. Praying to the Virgin is the death of the sheep. It steals your breath. Thus saith God the Lord, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. I the Lord have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and then that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Cain and Abel were the first two children that were born. Cain is the child of the devil. Abel means breath. Cain and Abel together make the word cannibal. It's inside of you. The whole system, the cannibalistic system is within you and within me. I am my own worst enemy. One side kills the other. This is St. Peter's Basilica. It has an obelisk in the middle, the same as the one in Washington, which intersects two sets, making the all-seeing eye. This is all black cobblestone, and the street going this way is black cobblestone. St. Peter's Basilica is in the shape of a keyhole. The Vatican itself is an upside-down cross. They have hidden the key to knowledge. Here are the scriptures, Woe unto you Pharisees and you teachers of the law, for you have hidden the key to knowledge. You don't enter the kingdom yourself and you stop others from entering. Your damnation shall be the worst. The other day the Lord told me to look at it, Jonathan. Look at the eyes. There's eyes on it. See the eyes right here and here? The Lord told me to come in at a different angle. You'll see it. I came in at a different angle. There's the head of a serpent, there's the eye, there's the eye. There's the hole in the mouth where the tongue comes out. Underneath this on the ground is a sidewalk that is in the shape of a forked tongue. We'll show it to you in a minute. 
here is the crown of the serpent right here. Eye of the serpent, eye of the serpent. That's where the tongue comes out. The word basilica means abode of the serpent or the basilisk. The word basilisk means serpent that kills with its breath. The Catholic Church is the serpent that kills with its breath. There's a bigger view of it. Here's the serpent wearing the crown. It is pregnant. There's its tail going down and its tail joins into the river which goes into a meandering river just like a big serpent parking himself right there in Rome claiming to be the true church of Jesus Christ. Well, let's have a look. This is also, besides being the pregnancy of the serpent, it is a keyhole and it also makes the all-seeing eye and it also matches the keyhole on the back of a cobra. I want to show you something. This is a king cobra. Those are the scales of a serpent. Those are the, those are the cobblestones in St. Peter's Basilica. The cobblestones at the abode of the serpent match the scales of a king cobra. There is the circle, the keyhole on the back of the cobra. There is the keyhole on the basilica. The entire thing is a keyhole. That's the center. And there's that on the back of the serpent. Here is a curled up, I believe it's a black cobra. Here is the stairway in the Sistine Chapel. It is a curled up serpent and these lines right here represent DNA. This is just unbelievable stuff guys. This is absolutely the exposed truth. The truth is out. The Bible is wide open now. If you apply the, the half and half paradigm to everything in the Bible, it'll all make sense. Look at the uh, Temple of Solomon. The pillars of, the pillars of Solomon, each 23 cubits. 23 in one DNA, 23 in the other. Remember the Twin Towers I kept telling you? Bush read Psalm 23, they were the Twin Towers were destroyed. The Twins, 23 and 23, they were destroyed. President Obama read Psalm 46, the Restored Temple, 46. The One World Freedom Tower is a representation that Satan is saying, I've rebuilt the temple, and guess who he rebuilt it in? Barack Obama. He's the rebuilt um, host body for Satan. That's all there is to it, man. It's simple. A ground zero, which is the representation of the two host bodies that they've been destroyed, and now one host body is going to host, you know, Satan. That was the representation of it. Be still and know that I am God. When you look at this, this is this is St. Peter's Basilica. On one side you'll see priests all in black and all in white. They know one half is darkness, one half is light. If the eye be single, the whole body is full of light. Well, that's because your eye is double. And one eye needs to be changed for the whole body to be full of light. That means your eye has become single because you know who Jesus is. Now the whole Bible makes sense. Here is the mouth of the serpent. Here's the tongue that comes out and splits into a sidewalk. And you'll see from here to here, the pattern changes and this sidewalk goes nowhere. It dead ends and it dead ends right there because it is a forked tongue coming out of the mouth of the serpent, which is the Vatican. There's a serpent's tongue. The entire world that's been, been built all around you manifests the spiritual world. That's what we've been showing you in these 260 videos that we've done. That that's why all these logos are half and half. A right side up, upside down. Mirror reflection. Now you know why. Satan's church. And you're in Satan's world. Okay, the mitochondria produces the breath of every cell. Don't forget, God breathed into Adam the breath of life and man became a, a soul. This mitochondria is producing breath 
in the form of energy, adrenaline triphosphate. As we go this way, these black lines get closer and closer and closer, and here they become very close because they become polarized. So these polarized lines manifest right here at one pole of the mitochondria. Okay, this will turn into the head of the virgin, okay. Also, these exact same lines, when it is turned upside down, this is the energy or the breath that is coming off the tongue of the sheep when the virgin is turned upside down. Therefore, the breath or the soul or the spirit of the sheep is being appropriated to crown the virgin, which is the other race of beings, which by the way, is alien. And I will show you that in this next image. This is called the creature, and this is from Akhenaten. There is an alien inside Akhenaten. When you turn Akhenaten upside down, it produces the creature. He's wearing a red turban. Here's his eye, his nose, and his mouth is a gate wide open right there. And he has a tongue like a serpent, and it is coming out right into the nose of the upside down child, which is also a dead sheep. There is a dead sheep in the head of the child and there is a reptile growing. This is a reptile egg. It is a reptile inside the egg and it is a dead sheep. So this creature is appropriating the breath of the sheep because the sheep is dying, just like the virgin, and the reptile is getting its life from the breath of the sheep that has died. They are one and the same. The Catholic Church is the home of Satan. It is the home of the alien invasion of planet Earth. Those that try and hide their plans, they turn everything upside down. One more quick comment. This entire hieroglyph, there are serpents eating the children. There is DNA transcription going on in this hieroglyph. And this, this entire hieroglyph has to do with serpents eating their own children. The Vatican itself is built on St. Peter's Basilica. Basilica means abode of the basilisk. A basilisk is a serpent. A basilica means royal abode of the serpent. Royal abode of the serpent that wears a crown. St. Peter's Basilica is the home of the devil. End of story. I believe this will conclude the word the Lord gave me when he told me he would use me to solve the rule of ages. There it is. Revelation 12. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered or to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. 
for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time.